coming up on this edition of ATV News. Some Logan residents were without power. We'll show you why one driver is in a lot of trouble. Why it might cost more to get new carpet or your car fixed. We'll show you how a robbery brought a community together. The National Weather Service says there's some dangerous conditions coming your way. I'll tell you what that means in weather. USU Cross Country did something the program has never done before. What that is, coming up in sports. All that and more, this is ATV News. Welcome to ATV News, I'm Brian Petty. And I'm Sarah Murphy. On its side and off the road, that's how a car wrecked when the driver tried to pass a backhoe on Monday night. The car rolled over about a mile off State Road 30 in Menden. Utah Highway Patrol says the driver tried to pass a backhoe and actually ended up off the shoulder. Troopers say the driver walked away uninjured due in part to wearing a seatbelt. Always wear your seatbelt. She was wearing her seatbelt and um, she's not injured. And I think that proves the point. UHP also says only one person was involved in the crash. Power is back in the neighborhoods around Willow Park after a car crash. We have Bo Lem reporting live. Bo? That's right, Brian. Monday morning, a car slammed into a power pole about the thickness of this tree. Needless to say, there was some cleanup involved. Logan City Lyman cut the power to about 30 to 50 homes around Willow Park for several hours on Monday while they took out the old pole and put in a new one. Logan City Power says they had to shut off the electricity because of the high voltage. Yeah, absolutely fatal. To come in contact with that would be an instant disaster. Another thing I thought was interesting was the people around weren't too concerned about the power outage. In fact, one woman said that she was very impressed with how Logan City was handling it and how quickly they did their job. All right, thanks, Bo. A daytime robbery shocked Bear River City, a local man says. But he also says that crime brought the community closer together. At this dinner on Friday, residents of Bear River City came together to raise money for the Bear River County Market. Because according to Box Elder County Sheriff's Department, this man robbed the store in late October. The store's owner, Kendall Julander, says that dinner isn't all about the money, but about the community. It's called a benefit dinner, but you know, money is not the question here at all. It's just the community need to get together, uh, give each other a hug. Uh, support and, and the strength of this community is right here. Julander says now that the suspect is in custody, the town has a bit of closure. Now tell us, Brian, have you ever had to hire a mechanic or an electrician before? I think that at some point everybody's had to hire a mechanic or an electrician. Exactly. You're not the only one because tradesmen are always in high demand, but the supply is running low. ATV's Chaz Ricks has more. Tearing up tile like this is all part of the job for floor installer Riley Ballard, and it's a job that fewer and fewer are doing. With the labor shortage and the, and the building boom, there's been a huge demand and nobody to, to fill that demand. Ballard says in his 17-year career, he's never seen so few carpet installers. But it's not only carpet installers that aren't finding enough workers. Brett Adamson, an electrician of 26 years, says finding help, especially young help, is really difficult. I need electronic techs, and it used to be that I could get, oh, I had a, a, just a huge stack of uh, resumes to go through, and now, and there, there would always be three or four that would suit the job, and it was just a matter of picking what, what the best fit is. Now we're lucky to find one. What does the X stand for? Adamson says the societal push to attend college has more young people in classes like this one, rather than in trades like carpet installers, 
an electrician, whoops, <laughs> and even mechanics. All these trades have seen a decline of workers in their respective fields. In the video, Success in the New Economy, it says that there are currently 6.5 million jobs open in the trades right now, and that there are 6 million people unemployed in the US. In fact, for every job that requires an advanced degree, like a master's or a PhD, there are two bachelor's degrees. And for every master's degree and every two bachelor's degrees, there are seven, there are jobs, seven available jobs available in trades, in trades and, skilled, and work. skilled work. Tyler Swainson is putting his tools away after a long day of laying carpet. A former student at USU, Tyler decided taking up a trade was a better option for him. When I quit school, everyone was worried, thinking that I was going to be unemployed in a year, wasn't be able to support my family. And I, I mean, honestly, I'm making more now than I would at, at a starter job in finance. That's what I was going into. The tradesmen all agreed that the trend of attending college and the use of technology have played roles in the decline of workers in trades. Chaz Ricks, ATV News. For more information on the shortage of tradesmen, check out our Facebook page. And when we come back, there is a special free Thanksgiving meal this weekend, and it's not just for those in need. And this is not your ordinary food drive, and we'll show you why. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. but I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Thanks for sticking around. It's International Education Week here at USU, and students gathered Monday night for a service project. Aaron Cox joins us live to tell us about this project. Aaron. Thanks, Sarah. This is not your ordinary service project. There's canned food and dried food and even bread, but that's not what makes this a special project. It's what they're driving in. These buses usually take you around campus, but tonight... It's different from a normal route. They're going farther. When we meet together each Monday, we find out exactly where we're going. We have one, two, three, four, five. And then the pickups, the drop off. Dropping off people. <laughs> and picking up food. A first prize. <laughs> Our goal is to collect 10,000 pounds of food. Okay. We'll go to a different area of Logan and collect a bunch of food that people left on their doors. How's it going? Ooh, how are you? <laughs> and we'll essentially stuff a bus with food. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, stay blessed. It's cool to just be able to help where you live, too. So this is an awesome opportunity. An opportunity that doesn't just benefit USU students. 
<laughs> it's all going to Cache Valley Food Pantry. Where the food is weighed. Tonight we got about 1640 pounds. And given to people in need. So if you look here, like Ellis, Woodruff, Summit, these are all elementary schools. And then you'll see like chocolate milk, strawberry milk, um, ramen, macaroni and cups, you know, and that's used for the children. And some of it is sent back to USU where these students are keeping shelves full so that with a swipe of your A card, you won't go hungry. A cause students say makes it all worth it. It makes your time richer and it's just more purposeful. And I love having some, like, something like this to look forward to. Stuff a Bus will be held every Sunday and Monday for the next two weeks at 7 p.m. Students say their goal is to gather about 10,000 pounds of food. Right now they say they have 3,300 pounds. That means they've achieved about 30% of their goal. Back to you, Sarah. Thanks, Erin. And how many students is this actually benefiting? The food is coming to our snack pantry here on campus. Students say, and the snack organizers actually say that they had 147 students visit the pantry just last week alone. Thank you. Aaron Cox reporting live from the Ag Patio. If you know someone who needs a meal this weekend, or if you just know someone who doesn't want to eat alone, the Loaves and Fishes Community Meal is hosting its annual Thanksgiving feast this weekend. And while it may be empty now, Organizers say this room and this kitchen inside the First Presbyterian Church here in Logan may soon host more than 400 people this Saturday for the special turkey feast. The organizers say this event, the, best of the, the biggest of the year, serves many purposes for the community. Really the meal feeds people who have needs to give in service, needs for companionship, needs to kind of um, alleviate perhaps some loneliness. So we like to say that we feed not only the belly, but we also feed the soul. If you'd like to get involved, Anderson says one of the best ways is just to attend, to eat, and share a conversation with others. When we come back, ATV's Taylor Emerson will have your full Cache Valley weather report. Your current temperature in Logan is 56 degrees. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing you. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, you, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! You listen, and you listen good. Hey! Where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry? Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back. Taylor Emerson joins us here at the desk. And Taylor, you're going to give us a weather report. Please tell me there are more warm temperatures like we've been seeing. Brian, there's not. There's actually a big cold front that's coming in, and it's bringing some stuff that uh, might upset your week. So let's take a look at the national radar real quick. Um, right here, you can see it coming in um, from northern um, Idaho down into Idaho and even Colorado. It's going to hit Utah and just kind of sit on top of it. What that's bringing with it is that's bringing um, low overnight temperatures, lower below freezing overnight temperatures, which uh, the National Weather Service is calling hazardous weather conditions. It's also bringing with it a couple of storms and some snow is a possibility in the forecast. So let's take a look at the national radar and I'll show you where that's coming from if we take a look. 
So right here we can see that those storms up in Oregon and Washington and even right here in California are going to continue to make its way west. Now right now these are just going to kind of move north and hit Idaho mainly, but they're going to connect and hit Logan in the central part of the week, bringing maybe some snow and some weather, some warm, some cold wet weather rather, sorry. And it may even bring some snow into the higher elevations. And like I said, with that hazardous weather advisory, some of the mountains down in Salt Lake and even some here in uh, northern Utah, up here north towards Logan, may get some of the snow. It may accumulate in the higher elevations and maybe even some in the valley. Now, if we take a look at our state radar to see what's going on right now, not a lot. We can see a couple disturbances coming from northern Nevada, and it's coming in just hitting the border. And right now in the areas, we've got a little bit coming up from the um, We've got a little bit coming up from the south here, but not a lot going on. Some scattered showers and some cloud cover around the valley. Nothing much to talk about, but now if we move into our seven-day forecast, we can kind of take a look. Wednesday right now, today we're looking okay. 55 with a 36, 36 degree overnight low. Not bad, but there is a 20% chance of storms that may come in. And into Thursday, it's going to turn into 70% chance of storms. Um, hitting us here in Logan with a 56 and 34 degree overnight low. But where things really start to kick up is this Thursday to Tuesday. We're going to be in that hazardous weather condition, so very cold overnight lows. And it is even bringing 60% chance and 50% chance later in the day of snow on Friday. A little bit of rain snow mix possible, um, 41 and 20, like I said, getting below freezing. Into Saturday, 40 and 21 degrees. It's going to clear out. A little bit of sun's going to peak out for the weekend. Your weekend's going to look a little okay. Into Sunday, though, the clouds are going to come back in. And into Monday, like I said, we're getting more cloud cover, more rain. 30% chance on Monday with 48 high and a 29 low. Into Tuesday, we are going to get a 20% uh, chance again. 48 is our high, 28 is our low. So we're going to get a few cold weather, uh, some, war some cold wet weather is in the forecast. So Betty, not a lot's going to happen. <laughs> Warm weather is out of our forecast. Yeah, that, it looks like it's gone forever with those lows in the 20s. It must be winter, huh? And the cold weather is a bummer, but Alex, tell us what can we look forward to in sports? Well, uh, men's basketball had a busy weekend. We'll show you who they played and how they did. The cross country made USU history. We'll show you what they did coming up. Sorry, I've got big ideas. As a college student, you have big ideas to make a big difference on campus. Why not get funding for those ideas in a big way? The Blue Goes Green Grant provides funding for student sustainability projects. These projects help USU students be more environmentally responsible, live healthier, and save money. To find out more, go to usu.edu slash bgg. Get funding for your Blue Goes Green idea in a big way. Blue Goes Green. Make a difference. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Those screams of joy came Saturday when USU cross country ran their way into history. Welcome to ATV News. Uh, welcome to ATV Sports. You've been welcome to ATV News. I'm Alex Zellner. I'll tell you guys exactly what cross country did shortly. But first, let's talk about basketball. Utah State took on Weber State Friday night in what has become a bit of a rivalry for both of the teams. Here you can see them getting ready, getting set up for the game. 
The Aggies would start off the night slowly with this missed shot by junior forward Dwayne Brown. But when Weaver tried to answer, sophomore guard Sam Merrill said not today with this mean block at the rim. Merrill would go on to help the Aggies taking this pass from junior guard D'Angelo Isby and nailing this three-pointer. Merrill later slashed through the lane and passed it behind the back of Weaver's bracket Chapman to junior forward Quinn Taylor who laid it in. Merrill then passed to sophomore guard Kobe McEwen, who went for the three and sank it. After a screen by senior forward Alex Dargenton, freshman guard Abel Porter drives in for the layup. Despite the Aggies' efforts to keep it close, Weaver was led in scoring by senior guard Ryan Richardson, who made this three-pointer, giving Weaver the lead of 27-24 at the half. Richardson did it again in the start of the second half. Uh, Isby would answer with this layup to make the score 63-58, but it wouldn't be enough for the Aggies. And after this mean slam in, uh, Weber would go on to win the game 65-59. USU returned home Monday to take on Montana State. And McEwen started off the night hot with this three-pointer and would go on to score again and again and again, over and over again all night long giving his team uh, a leading uh, 20 points scored. In an effort to share the love, McEwen feeds Isby, who nailed this three ball to give the Aggies the lead at the start of the second half. Isby was scoreless in the first, but would go on to score 18 more points on the night. McEwen then passes this one to the very tall 6'10 freshman Clay Stahl, who shows Montana who's in charge. Can we get that again from another angle? Jeez, he looks like he's playing with a six foot rim. Meanwhile, senior forward Alex Dargenton earned his first career double-double, and I don't mean the cheeseburger, with 11 points scored and 11 rebounds in just 16 minutes of play. Though McEwen and Dargenton made most of the noise Monday, Merrill would score some himself with this three-pointer. Not to be outdone, Quinn Taylor wanted some too, passed to Merrill, who fed it right back, setting him up for this dunk. Aggies win 81-73. The Aggies will take on Mississippi Valley State in the Spectrum tonight at 7 p.m. and will be at number 17 Gonzaga Saturday. Good luck, Aggies. All right, remember that cross-country celebration I showed you? Well, here's what that was all about. USU hosted this year's NCAA Mountain Region Championship last Friday and ran themselves into the history books. The women ran a 6K and the team placed fourth with junior Cashley Carter in 11th, junior Alyssa Snyder in 17th, and senior Tylee Skinner in 19th. All three women were given state all-region honors. Going into nationals, the women's team is ranked 19th in the country by the U.S. Track and Field Cross Country Coaches Association. As for the men, they ran a 10K and finished 7th as a team. Senior Dylan Maggard placed 7th overall and was given all-region honors as well. The men are ranked 26th nationally. Some of the runners were brought to tears of joy over the whole experience. It's really exciting. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's really awesome. I never would have thought this was a possibility my freshman year. Despite the, the excitement off, following the race we, of Friday, neither team had confirmed birth into the season, NCAA national eat. tournament, something you has, you has sent, never sent a whole team uh, to the nationals. But Sunday afternoon, they will be sending a team out that will be in Louisville. All the work is paid off, and we... We bought in, we set goals at the beginning of the season uh, that we would be the first team to Nationals and uh, now we can finally say uh, we're the first. Uh, in volleyball, which is our next sport that we are going to look at, uh, USU took on Air Force Saturday and it was a lot of, it, was, it turned out to be a very long game. And, um, you know, Looks like we do not, here we go, there's our footage. Saturday was a long night for the Aggie Volleyball with long rallies and sets. Aggies put themselves into game point situations multiple times. In set one, they actually ended up winning. In this set two, there's a mean kill by outside hitter Lauren Anderson. There it is again, giving them the lead again in set two. Here we have a mean dig by Tasia Taylor and an outside hit by Kayla DeCourcy. Despite some force uh, and efforts, Air, Air Force would go on to win sets three and four, but USU would come back and win set five, three to two. That was the last hit of the game. It was a long night and it was very, very exciting. 
USU will close out their home season with senior night tomorrow against Nevada. In high school football, Mountain Crest Mustangs are in the 4A Division Championship game Friday against Orem. Good luck, Mustangs. In college football, USU will take on Hawaii this Saturday, and they hope to improve their record to 6-5 overall, keeping their bowl dreams alive. The game is at 1 p.m. at Maverick Stadium. Back to, back to Brian and Sarah. Looks like we don't have their footage. There, there you guys are. Hey, guys, welcome back. <laughs> All right, thanks, Alex. When we come back, we'll show you a couple things you need to check on your car before winter hits. And be careful where you park overnight. Starting today, that all changes. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. Got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back. Parking in Logan is going to be a little more difficult. Logan City won't let you park a vehicle on any street or city-owned parking lot between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. There is an exception, however, those with winter parking permits for properties built before 1968 if they don't provide on-site parking. That starts today and goes until March 15th. When your car breaks down, it costs you money and time. I talked with local repair shops about simple things you might be overlooking that will help your car get higher gas mileage, perform better, and stay on the road. The time you spend in your car is probably split between driving down the road, sitting at stoplights, and praying you make it through an upcoming roundabout. But if your car makes it into Cam Hulse's shop, it's most likely there because of lack of maintenance, or possibly from stuff that people just neglect. Cam says one of the most common things he sees neglected are oil changes. We've seen guys at 30,000 miles forget that they need to change oil. Cam's business partner, Jeremy Bird, also sees a lot of cars that are poorly maintained. People forget that they have to check things. And another one of those things is tire pressure. Not everyone has a pressure gauge like this sitting in their back pocket. But if you can take a little bit of time before you get into that driver's seat to visually inspect your tires, it can save you a lot of time and money further down the road. And here at Les Schwab, tire pressure is one of their main concerns. It's a great idea. We recommend once a month to check your tire pressure. Even newer cars that have a low tire light in the dash should have the pressure checked when the light isn't on because it doesn't come on until the pressure drops more than 25%. That's pretty low. And if you have your tires filled up correctly, it'll help your tires last as long as possible. It helps you get the best fuel mileage and it could be up to 10% difference whether you have your tires filled up or if they're quite low. Tire shops like Les Schwab will check and fill your tires for free, even if you didn't buy your tires from them. All of our stores are laid out so you can pull up behind our base while we're working and we'd be happy to top off your tire pressures for you. Brian Petty, ATV News. Les Schwab Discount Tire, Big O, and Jiffy Lube are happy to fill your tires free of charge. Thank you for joining us on this edition of ATV News. We heard that you got a job, Brian Petty. Uh, that is true. I did get a job in California. Oh, congratulations. What are you talking about? Um, so I will be working with uh, Power Auto Media and talking about cars, doing articles, a lot of on-camera stuff. So it'll be, it'll be pretty cool. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. Brian. congratulations From you and the Brian rest of us Petty. here. Definitely. Thank you. So for more local news, feel free to check out our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. And today we'll leave you with these shots of Veterans Day on the Quad. Have a great day, Aggies.